Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today for our webinar, What's New in Microsoft Teams for February 2023, featuring our special guest, Andy Malone. So uh, my name is Silvio, and I'm a sales executive uh, here at Syskit. And today we are going to be joined by Andy, our star of the day. I already mentioned him, and you'll, you'll hear more about him, well, <laughs> in the next few minutes. And also my colleague, Carlo, who will later be showing you a demo of uh, Syskit Point platform. So uh, many of you already know us as a, <clears throat> as a company, but for those who doesn't, let, let me do a quick introduction. So Syskit is a software development company founded more than 13 years ago. Uh, we develop products for Microsoft 365 governance and security, uh, as well as SharePoint on-prem administration. So we currently have more than uh, 3,000 customers all across the world. And, you know, these are ranging from small businesses up to large corporations with hundreds of thousands of, uh, well, employees. And we currently offer four products, uh, including our awarded uh, SP Docket for SharePoint on-premise, as well as the Syskit Point platform for Microsoft 365 government governance. Uh, this is the one that we'll be actually demoing today for you. Uh, so before we go deeper into the well webinar itself, uh, let's do a few housekeeping uh, rules. So all all people who have registered will receive a recording of this webinar within a few days after the webinar. Uh, after end this presentation, we will also have a, a short demo of the point platform showing us. Uh, how it can help you get, gain better visibility over your teams, over your channels, how it can help you avoid oversharing, prevent security breaches, and so on. And finally, after that, we will have a Q&A session where you will have a chance to, well, ask Andy whatever you're interested in, and uh, he will answer all of your questions. So yeah, uh, please use the Q&A function on the top right side of the screen in order to ask your questions throughout the webinars. You can ask them during the Andy's presentation, during our demo, during the entire time. Okay, finally, it is uh, my pleasure to actually introduce our special guest today, Andy Malone. He is a prestigious international. He has a prestigious international career uh, spanning for over 26 years now. Uh, he is a world-class technology instructor, author, consultant, Microsoft MVP, and multiple award-winning international conference speaker. That's, that, that's a lot of very good words to have on one webinar for a person who's a key guest. Uh, he has spoken at events such as Microsoft Ignite, Nordic Infrastructure Conference, and the uh, Cybercrime Security Forum. Uh, his passionate style of delivery combined with, uh, well, a sense of fun is his trademark. And uh, yeah, this has won him a great community recognition. I'm sure you'll We'll see all of that in a few minutes. You can also visit Andy uh, as he has a popular YouTube channel, uh, Andy Malone UK, or simply check out his website at uh, andymalone.org. I will now give a warm welcome and we'll turn things over to Andy. Andy, are you ready? I'm here, sir. Thank you very much. Hello, Silvio. How are you? Uh, thanks very much for the nice uh, uh, introduction. I uh, hope you can all see my screen. Uh, so, really nice to see everybody um, uh, on this cool day. Well, it, it is here anyway. Um, <laughs> but uh, we're going to take today to take a look at what's new in uh, Microsoft Teams. And um, Teams is really quite an exciting, it's become a very exciting uh, product, actually, uh, in the last kind of few years. And it's, it's much more than a product, actually. It's becoming... Well, I, I like to think it's more like an ecosystem. Now, you'll have to forgive me. I'm I'm going to just be using a single screen here today. So I'm going to flip uh, between my demos and so on. So I hope that that's OK with everybody. Uh, and as Silvio said uh, at the end of the session, uh, you're very welcome to uh, ask me anything that you like. All right. So what I thought we would cover is really just a kind of an update of where we currently are with Microsoft Teams. I thought I will take you a look uh, at, at some of the kind of the current offerings or recent releases. And this includes, of course, uh, Microsoft uh, Shared Channels. We'll talk about some of the cool security features that have just found their way into Teams as well. And the super sexy uh, Teams Live Share feature, which I know that everybody's going to look at. All right. Uh, in addition to this, we're also going to talk about voice enhancements, client updates, 
Uh, and then I'm, at the end of the session, as Silvio mentioned, I'm going to hand this over to uh, my colleagues at Syskit there. We're going to give you a whizzy demo of their Syskit point platform. All right. Um, now, in addition to that, um, I, I've, I've got a couple of other bits and pieces as well. One thing that you'll understand is when you come on one of my sessions, it, uh, you know, if I think of something, oh, I've got to show you that, I'll probably just go and do that. So uh, bear with me. All right. Um, now, um, if you don't know me, um, as Silvio said, I'm a Microsoft MVP uh, for 25, 26 years now, actually, as a trainer and 16 years as an MVP, as well as teaching nice people like you. I also teach um, internal Microsoft staff as well, and I speak at various uh, worldwide events uh, as well. Um, I'm, in my spare time, I'm also an author. I write novels, actually. So The Seventh Day and Shadows Rising. If you like a bit of Da Vinci Code type stuff, then there you go. That's that's basically me. All right. So uh, what I'd like to do is just kind of just kind of start this session with just a, a little demo of some of the current uh, innovations uh, that we have here in Microsoft Teams. All right. So I'm going to kick off in the Microsoft 365 Admin Center here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come into Teams and Groups. And this is uh, something that was done last year. Before this, of course, we just had Microsoft 365 um, and uh, Groups, and we also had Teams separately. But of course, Teams are Groups, and Groups are Teams. And it's super important that you get that and that you understand that, all right? So when we add a group, you can see that we have a number of different types of Microsoft 365 uh, groups here. And when the Microsoft 365 group is a special type of group because it's a fully collaborative group. So not only do you get like a shared mailbox, shared calendar, a shared document library, Teams website, and so on, but the one thing about that is they're all Microsoft products. And the thing about the Microsoft 365 groups is that you can extend them to become a Microsoft team. So you can see that here some of these websites are not Microsoft uh, Teams. So I can click onto these and you can see that depending on the, the group itself, um, I can go into the settings and you can uh, upgrade these. And these are kind of pre-created ones that we've got here in uh, Microsoft 365 at the moment. So <clears throat> what are some of those new things that I wanted to mention? Well, what I'm going to do is I've got a team here. I've got a Microsoft group here, and uh, this is called Oslo. And you can see here that in Oslo, um, I can see that it's a Microsoft 365 team. Um, what Microsoft have been doing recently, they've been updating their 365 admin center with a lot more integration. So rather than you having to go into multiple platforms, so for example, SharePoint in Teams and in 365, the idea is that you can just come in here and you can manage it directly here in Microsoft Teams. I can view the Teams website uh, and so on. Um, other things that we can do, um, which is like super cool, actually, I can go into the settings here and again, let people out or, you know, if you want to let people outside the organization, email the team, which is really cool. Send copies of Teams emails. Um, also, the external file sharing option from Microsoft SharePoint is now been integrated into directly into Microsoft 365 here. So again, Another example of where you don't have to go off and look for a particular feature because it's already here. Now, of course, when we talk about Teams, we talk about Teams channels. And you can see here, do you want Teams owners to be able to edit channels and add channels um, to this particular site? So, yes, I can do that. Teams owners can delete channels. Um, again, you may or may not want that. Um, you can change the privacy, of course, so from a private to a public and vice versa. Do remember that with a public team, a public group, anyone can join it, whereas with a private group, it's only the members and it's by invitation. Then you can request to join a group or a team. Brand new, just in January here, is the new sensitivity labels. 
to be honest, we could always do this. And this is, of course, um, as part of Microsoft Purview, which is the compliance center in Microsoft 365 and things like labeling and classification, excuse me, um, which is super in important. <coughs> um, now with um, labeling and classification, to be honest, you could always do this, but it was only through PowerPoint. You had to switch this on and, and until recently, it was a bit of a pain if I have to be honest with you. So now what we've got, you can now simply go into the um, group here, the team, and again, that sensitivity label can be uh, configured here. Okay, excuse me. <laughs> right, so I'm just gonna go ahead, I'm gonna save this now, and again, it updates that into Microsoft Groups, uh, Teams, and also SharePoint websites. So now I can simply go into the SharePoint Admin Center here. And again, if I go into my sites, into my active sites here, and if I scroll down and I come to my Oslo site here, which is just there, again, if I click onto this, you'll see that this again has come through. So uh, again, you'll see things like sensitivity labels. So again, I can see the activity. I can see the permissions, of course, any permissions and any policies. And look, here is that sensitivity label and the external sharing options directly from that Microsoft 365 portal. So it's really nice to see that and the fact that you can configure that and you can change the labels uh, and so on there. That's really gonna be really useful, okay. Now, just to remember um, for demo purposes, I'm using an E5 subscription here. So uh, you may or may not have these features in your subscription. So just be aware of that, okay. All right, um, so that is just a little bit about the SharePoint Admin Center. Um, okay, so let's take a look then at the slides. So that's just some of the uh, admin um, innovations that we've seen. One super sexy feature that's been out for a little while now is shared channels. And recently I did a session, actually it's on the Syskit um, YouTube channel, and it's also on their website as well, all about uh, shared channels. And we did a really nice in-depth demo on that. If you've not seen that, definitely go ahead and check that out, it's quite useful. So when we talk about a team, of course, I just mentioned that you can create a team, you can extend a Microsoft 365 group to become a team. Teams can either be public or private. And again, I just mentioned that. But within one of the cool features about Teams is of course that you can have shared channels or different types of channels. So you can have a standard channel and also a private channel as well. Now, when you create a team, every team gets the general channel by default. You can't change that, unfortunately, but you can add in additional channels and these can be private. So focused within the requirements of a particular team or they can be set you know a public channel that anybody uh, can access so one of the problems with those types of channels though is that until recently anyway if you wanted to access uh, a channel or in another organization you had to share the uh, the entire team or you had to invite that external guest to become a member of that uh, team and to be honest, um, it was it was OK, but the problem was you had to keep logging off and logging back on again and you had different sets of credentials and it was tiresome. It was a pain. So now with shared channels, the idea is that the shared channel just slots directly into your Microsoft Teams client and it's flexible access across all organizations. So the idea is there's no tenant switching and it avoids oversharing. So you don't need to get access to the entire team. You can just give focused access to that channel. 
Um, it also reduces team proliferation as well. And of course, it can inherit the team membership settings. Excuse me. OK. Now, um, one of the cool things about sharing outside of a team, of course, or outside of a tenant is that, you know, we all have kind of business contacts, whether it's customers, whether it's suppliers and so on. So, of course, you might want to share content with an intendant member or external uh, customers as well. And you can share it with either with individual people or you can share it with teams within your organization or even external uh, to your organization as well. So um, in terms of sharing this uh, with a team, it's <coughs> excuse me, um, it's really quite simple. So what we do is you can see here, I want to go ahead and I want to create a shared channel for the marketing team here. So when you create a channel, um, essentially here, you've got those three options now. So you can create a standard channel where everybody has access, a private channel, which you know only the members will have access, but this is the one now where we have shared channels and you can share this across organizations. And anyone who's got access to that shared channel, it means that they don't have to log off and log back on again. It's super cool. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to share this uh, with the team uh, and I want to share it with everyone on the team. So you can see automatically I can click next and it automatically brings in those members. By the way, at this point, um, can I remove an individuals? Of course you can. You can do that. So I'm going to go ahead. You can now see that that channel has come in and that channel is represented by a couple of links, a couple of chain links here. All right. So easy to do, really, really simple. And you can see that labeling classification also filters through there as well. Um, now, if I go into the actual team itself here, you can see if I go into the channel, I can now see um, any I can see members. I can see any invites or requests that you may have created. You've got the channel settings as usual. And of course, you've got the analytics tab there as well, which gives you a nice overview of how popular your channel is going to be. Um, OK, so the next thing then, uh, again, adding members so you can see the members here and how long have the members uh, been there. You can see where they're located as well. And again, you can change their roles if necessary as well. OK. Um, right. Uh, again, you can see uh, the, whether the user is a channel member. So you get the little face. Uh, it looks like a, almost like a little chess piece there as well. And you've also got the little team icon there as well. So what about um, sharing a channel with a team then? OK, so likewise, you can share it with another team of users. So uh, again, you can choose, do you want to share it with people, with a particular team, or with a team that you own? So again, in this case, I'm going to share it directly with a team. You specify the name of the team and send that invite out. And once the invite comes in, uh, I can then simply go in. I can then see if the uh, invite has been taken up. The team is there. And again, you can uh, also configure, you know, where if the person doesn't accept the invitation, you can then delete the invite or accept it and so on. So that invite comes in. You can either decline it or you can accept the invite. So again, my user accepts it here. It adds it in. And again, you can choose the team, which will then launch that channel too. OK, so that's now been done. Again, you can see that this is in. So uh, the team is here. The email comes in. And again, I've now added that user to the team and they can now fully uh, collaborate. OK, very, very cool uh, feature, by the way. All right. So um, again, any point, of course, one of the nice things about this 
is that it's user optional. So at any point, the user can say, you know, I don't need this anymore. I want to finish with this and they can just remove themselves from the team. So again, it's very, very flexible and also for things like privacy as well. So just flipping over back here into Microsoft uh, 365, um, I'm gonna come into a couple of places here then. I'm gonna come into, this is the Teams Admin Center. So within the Teams Admin Center here, sorry, no, this is the Teams, Microsoft Teams itself. So you can see here that, uh, again, I've got some examples. There's my general channel. I've got the HR portal here. And these are at the moment up, okay? But here we go. We've got the Oslo sales project here. And again, it's a shared team. Now, interestingly, you think you probably might wonder, Andy, where do all these channels and where, where does all this information sit in Microsoft 365. So if I go back into the 365 admin center, I'm just gonna go back into SharePoint. In fact, I've got it here. And you can see here in the SharePoint admin center, um, if I come into Teams, you can also see channel sites. And sure enough, here we have Oslo. And you can actually see that it actually has three Subsites. Now, I'm often asked, Andy, whatever happened to the old subsite feature in Microsoft 365 and in SharePoint? And the answer is right here. So I can click onto those three sites, and you can see this is how I can now manage those channel sites. Okay, and <clears throat> so you can see the, the site name, you can see the URL to the site, what type of channel that it is, when the last activity took place, um, who's the admin of this, this is just a demo account that I've created, and look, you can see it also inherits that labeling and classification um, from the uh, uh, compliance portal. So you can go into each of these, but you can see you can't manage them here. You have to manage these from within the Teams Admin Center. And in terms of the labeling, you can only manage that from within Microsoft 365 groups. So again, you've got to think about, um, the, you know, the problem with 365 <clears throat> is that there is no kind of one portal to rule them all, if you will. So the, the one nice thing about Teams is it actually forces you to learn um, all of these different portals, which can be very useful if you're taking exams, of course. Okay, so just again, a, a couple of little things just to be aware of. Okay. Right, so now I want to take a quick look at then some of the new Teams security features. And again, I've just shown you one with the labeling and classification. Now, again, these are not necessarily new features, but what Microsoft are doing here is that they're extending their security portfolio to talk to Microsoft Teams. So Teams, of course, essentially think of Teams as a wrapper service. So all your files and content are actually stored in SharePoint. Um, things like chat messages, um, meeting information, everything like that, that's all stored within Exchange. The calling is stored, is managed by Skype for Business, let's call it, all right? So Teams, for one part of a word, is essentially a wrapper uh, service. So what Microsoft are now doing, they're extending some of the Defender for 365 security features for Microsoft Teams. All right, so uh, let's have a look at some of these. So the idea is that when we want to make online meetings safe, okay? So if you're going to chat, if you're going to share confidential information, if you're going to share attachments with people, or put links in messages, we need to know that they're safe, all right? 
Um, so we want to be able to protect documents and information. And you just saw that with the labeling and classification feature. Um, also, um, privacy is such a big issue, especially here in Europe with the likes of GDPR, of course. And of course, when we talk about compliance, compliance is such an important buzzword that we've all had to get used to because of the way we live in the cloud. So what about protecting teams and organizations? So we have a whole suite of security products. So you have, of course, built-in protection. Uh, you've got the Defender brand of products, which is protects things like um, auditing. You've got uh, anti-phishing, anti-malware, anti-virus. Um, and in Microsoft Exchange, that was all pro provided by something called EOP, Exchange Online Protection. But Microsoft uh, Defender for 365 adds in a whole new dimension. You've got things like safe links, safe attachments, and you've got things like secure score, which was part of 365, which has now been extended to cover um, tools like Microsoft Teams. And of course, Microsoft Sentinel. Sentinel, of course, um, is a SIEM system, security incident and event management platform. So essentially, it, you can deploy agents uh, on all of your services and servers, and it goes out and it pulls and it looks through all of the audit records, the logs, and it looks for anomalies, and it would alert you if there are any potential issues. So it's very, very uh, proactive rather than being reactive. <clears throat> so just a, a quick look at how 365 is extending that security for your users. So you can see here that we've got safe links. So safe links, of course, uh, a link comes in in the chat message. Now, of course, you know, users will just go off and they'll click on a link because it's in an organization, it's in a team. It's trustworthy, but of course, with safe links, this would happen. It would come up and it would say, look, that link that you're clicking on, that QR code, barcode, whatever, it's potentially malicious. Now, again, if it comes in as yellow, that means that the link is currently being scanned. If it comes in as red, then it's just basically saying, I'm, I'm sorry, you're not going to be able to go to that particular uh, link. Um, I'll show you these in a second, by the way. All right. So ge generally, the way that Teams has been extended, when you create a, a, a safe link rule now, there is an, an option here for Microsoft Teams. So it's just showing you that these tools have been uh, extended for that. Now, I'm going to make sure, by the way, that you get a copy of these slides. Um, so all the links and documentation uh, within there you're going to be able to get hold of that, OK? All right, so audit logs, so enhanced auditing. So enhanced auditing absolutely rocks. So it means that you can now search for really kind of detailed activity. So here I can come in. This is in the security portal, Defender for 365, into auditing. So I can come in and say to and from a specific date and time. I can look for, you know, specific activities in a particular product. So in this case, in Microsoft Teams, all right? And it will then go off and it will then search for all of those activities and I can then export them into a CSV file for an uh, analysis, okay, like so. All right. Um, and then, of course, if you're using other tools, so maybe Power BI or something like that, you can really analyze them with some kind of cool graphics and uh, things like that. All right. Um, so auditing, super important. And uh, again, uh, things like um, we've also got uh, enhanced um, security features coming into Microsoft 365. So for things like lobbies, meeting lobbies. So especially if you're doing big webinars like this in Teams, then of course you want to know uh, that the uh, attendees are genuine attendees 
And again, things like that, sharing content, who can share the content and so on. This is going to be really useful there. Okay. As I mentioned, Sentinel um, uh, is currently now available for Teams. So you can go into the Teams preview here, extend the capabilities of Microsoft Sentinel into Microsoft Teams. It goes off, it analyzes everything and immediately reports back any kind of anomalous activity. All right. Absolutely, really, really useful to, to know. Okay. Um, okay, so, oh, yes, secure score. Okay, so now we've got secure score in Teams. Now, S secure score, to be honest, has been out for a long time. And the idea is it looks through your organization and it compares your secure score with those of your industry peers. All right, so you can go in and it will make some recommendations. All right. So based on your score, the idea is it will pre present you with an action plan here and you can then obviously take, take those recommendations and uh, improve your secure score. So if I just flip over here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come into the Defender for 365 portal. And I just want to show you a couple of things. I'm going to come down into email and collaboration. Now, in previous versions of this tool, uh, they just called it email. But of course, this is Microsoft Teams, right? So this covers everything. Um, so I'm going to come into policies and rules. And I just showed you safe links. And the other super cool feature for this um, is also safe attachments. So if I come into safe attachments here, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to create a new safe attachment, and I'm going to call this my Oslo, uh, in fact, I'll just call it SA policy. Doing a demo live is never a good idea. I'll click next. And it, you, can, you can do this policy for users, for groups, and also for domains as well. Groups are teams, teams are groups. So in this case, I'm going to create this for my Oslo HQ. And I'm going to then I could say, do you want to exclude? So I could include and then exclude people if you want to. I'm going to click next. Now you can see here that we have a number of options. So safe attachments, by the way, what does this actually do? So when email comes in, um, it takes the attachment and it moves the attachment into a what we, what Microsoft calls a detonation chamber. So it's kind of in a in a secure bubble, and it checks that uh, attachments for anything nasty. So perhaps it's got um, registry uh, registry entries that are trying to make registry calls. Um, if it's trying to block, you know, use malware or something like that. Um, so you've got some options. So you can switch it on just for monitoring. Um, and this is quite useful if you want to actually receive those messages. But actually, um, uh, if you will, if you want to receive the messages, um, but let's say you've got like a, a malware expert within your organization, you can block them. Um, replacement is currently being depreciated, so I'm not going to talk about that. Um, but the one thing that you do have is dynamic delivery. And this immediately delivers the message um, without the attachment. So it scans the attachment and then it reattaches it if it's clean. It's super cool. All right. You can also redirect the messages as well. Absolutely super, super simple to use. And I just realized I just forgot to show you the main thing that I was trying to show you here. Let me just go in and edit this. Um, there, you probably noticed that there was a magic button on it. So if I just open up this policy, I am just going to edit this, these settings. And if I scroll down, you can see that there is actually, it does include Microsoft Teams here, 
all right so this includes the not just the links but it includes any attachments that that go in microsoft teams all right so really super super cool feature one of my super favorite features currently um just in public preview shortly actually is teams live share so teams live share is a bit like well we've had the ability to share a document and collaborate on a document at the same time so with teams live share you can actually create uh, documents you can create graphics anything within teams and any members of the team can actually collaborate it uh, at the same time this is kind of a bit freaky actually but super clever stuff now um so you know you might be doing design you might be designing somebody's kitchen or somebody's garage and so that you know the the um, uh, recipient might say hey you know well you know can i have something over here he can draw on the screen the architect can draw on the screen and so on so it provides real-time collaboration things like linking and cursors you've got video and audio synchronization so you can all not just collaborate on something but you can all work at the same time and you all have different colors of pens and and so on um, so real-time collaboration it provides live presence presence um, also the live state so the document that you're currently working on everybody would then be able to get a copy of that you've got things like a countdown timer this can integrate into things like live events and you can also distribute this in a number of different ways as well um so linking and curses here you see there's a whole bunch of different tools uh, that you can use so different mouses uh, mice mouses mice and also different uh, types of stylus styluses as well you've got erasers you've got you can also use the cool laser pointer feature um, and it scales across multiple devices as well and you can see here you get some kind of cool ideas of what the the different devices would look like okay so very cool all right so this is something actually I'm really uh, excited about actually. Um, another thing that we have, um, this kind of takes traditional screen sharing. It's like traditional screen sharing on steroids. Um, so uh, video sync, you get a much higher quality of video. And also it respects things like content licensing. So again, um you know you might worry about you know if we're drawing let's say something confidential in a public presentation does microsoft keep a copy of that absolutely not no um also we've got uh, increased um accessibility options that you can use as well so definitely uh, check out this this is such a cool feature now in public preview all right um so, and it's got an adaptive UI. Um, again, you can see the attendee view, you can see the Teams view uh, as well. So definitely check that out, super cool feature. Um, right, voice. Now, of course, one of the cool features that Microsoft Voice uh, or Microsoft Teams has, of course, is the ability for voice. So telecommunications have been in, uh, of course, Skype for Business, link services and so on before that but now um, microsoft teams of course you can extend teams so most customers will have one version of microsoft teams um, but if you want to take advantage of features like voice you want to use teams phones let's say or you want to use teams rooms collaboration bars then this is a really fantastic feature the only problem with voice, though, is that often, how do we deploy the voice service? So we de do we deploy it on premises? So which typically would involve a, a quite a large expense. You've got to spend all of this infrastructure or do you use the cloud service like Microsoft 365? So one of the problems with the cloud service is that it's not available everywhere. 
So what Microsoft has done, they've kind of looked at this and they said, yeah, you know, how can we bring the rich calling features to our Microsoft uh, business customers um, who simply don't have access to a data center that can offer voice? So what they're doing is they're now enhancing this with something called Operator Connect. So we've got three options. You can purchase one of the calling plans. Um, so let's say, for example, you've got an E5 subscription for 365. Um, you still need to go out and purchase a calling plan. So it's a bit like a mobile phone contract. Do I go out and do I purchase X number of minutes for international or domestic calling? Um, or do I do direct routing? So direct routing is where you have the equipment on premises, or do you use what we call Operator Connect? Um, Operator Connect is really super convenient um, because it, it's, it's services provided by telcos in that country and it's very competitive actually so for example if you're in the uk or in norway or in uh, croatia you know there's bound to be different telephone providers there that can provide you with this and the idea is it's a one-stop solution so not only do you get the license for the calling but they will also provide you with you the amount of minutes that you can use and uh, and so on um so again it, it's really um it's not only cost saving, but it's also time saving as well. Um, currently available in a whole bunch of different markets around the world. Um, uh, and it's becoming super popular, by the way. Um, there's a couple of links in the slide decks, and that will take you to uh, more information. Um, in fact, instead of showing the slides, I'll just quickly show you this. So I'm going to come in here into Microsoft Teams, into the Teams admin center here and a couple of things if I go in here into Microsoft voice and you can see that we have this feature here called operator connect and I can then simply come in I can see all the operators who are available so you can see that all around the world you've got all the different operators and you can see where they operate so you can see what offers they're using and so on this is a really really nice feature so the idea is that it you know if you were one of those customers that wanted teams voice or teams phones and it wasn't available in your region well now you have another option okay um, just one final thing, just to mention while I'm in Teams Voice, something else that was, it's been out a, a, a couple of months, but it's definitely worth mem mentioning. Um, in terms of security, um, if I just collapse this down uh, here, um, uh, where are we? Let's just bring this in here. Yes, we have this thing here called an enhanced encryption policy. <coughs> Excuse me. This is a very cool uh, feature. Um, now, what does that mean? So, you know, when you're on a Teams call or a Teams meeting or a webinar or something like that, and it says, hey, do you want to record the call? Well, there are times where you may not want the call to be recorded um, if it was a private call or something like that. So we have these three profiles here. And if I click onto this, we have this thing called end-to-end -end encryption. Now, end-to-end -end encryption, unfortunately, does not work um, or it would not allow a call to be recorded, all right? It wouldn't allow a meeting to be recorded because everything is encrypted, all right? Now, um, one of the newish features that Microsoft Teams has just announced is something called Teams Premium. And this is an example of um, a feature that's going to be available on Teams Premium. So Teams Premium will just give you extended features. It's almost like two different service plans. So you might not need Teams Premium. You might not need these features. So definitely go out to docs.microsoft.com and just have a look at what's the difference between, you know, Teams Standard and this new Teams Premium. Okay, there's some quite nice documentation out there. But if security 
is really important to you, then this end-to-end -end encryption is going to be invaluable. All right. Okay. Finally, the Teams client features. Now, honestly, you blink and there's a whole bunch of new features uh, for Microsoft Teams. So just some of the things that uh, were recently announced, you can now delete chats. Uh, you can delete chats within a group or a distribution list. You can add to the chat as well. Um, you, When you create a message, it will make recommendations on, hey, you know, this is somebody who might be interested in this message. Um, you can also have a new, there's a new role here for co-organizations, uh, co sorry, co-organizers for breakout rooms. And we have an updated Teams toolbar in Teams meetings. We have some new accessibility uh, settings in Teams meetings which allows you to do sign language. So uh, again, this is becoming a product which is really inclusive. So the idea is that you can now have a meeting and you can have a dedicated signer um, who is going to join the meeting uh, to offer your users a sign language view. That's very cool, actually. Um, we also have things like instant polls. Um, you can also have now multiple questions within a poll rather than just one. So before, it was only one question. And now you can also have images in polls as well. How cool is that? All right. So there we go. That, my friends, is just a look uh, at um, some of the cool features that I've are either new or coming in Microsoft Teams. Now, uh, definitely stay tuned here because I'm going to pass you over back uh, to Silvio for a look at some of the cool features of Microsoft, uh, sorry, of uh, Syskit Point. Very cool, by the way. Thanks. Uh, thank you, Andy. This was absolutely Excellent uh, presentation. I believe everyone loved it. Uh, so now remember everyone, uh, any questions you may have for Andy, just, just submit them for our Q&A uh, session later on. Please don't be shy. Andy likes to answer questions. I mean, the plan here is give him a few minutes to rest and then swamp him with questions. So yeah, just just go ahead. Uh, before we, uh, we, well, we start with that, we're going to come to the next stage uh, of our webinar, which is, uh, yeah, a presentation on Syskit Point, which is going to be done by the Syskit's customer success manager, Carlo. So yeah, Carlo, are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. I hope you can hear me, Sylvia, right? Yes, okay, I can. Great, great, great. Okay, great. So as Sylvia said, my name is Carlo and I'm a customer success manager here at Syskit. And I would like to first thank Andy for such a lovely and relevant uh, content that he always delivers on his YouTube channel, on his website. Um, and the goal here is to essentially continue that today and transfer it into the context of uh, Syskit Point. Syskit Point, of course, is one of our products and it, uh, it's a single scalable platform that makes M365 reporting management and governance uh, easy, not just for you, but also uh, for your business users, for uh, the team owners and site owners within your organization. So hopefully you can see my screen. Um, Syskit Point, first of all, has various angles through which it uh, reports and takes action on your tenant, including the sites, right, where it analyzes your Microsoft Teams, OneDrive's groups, SharePoints, of course, also, the user front is something uh, that it can target. But today, as a continuation of this topic, we're going to continue with Microsoft Teams and Groups. So as soon as I click on that report, I'm giving this wonderful overview and a full inventory of all the Microsoft Teams and M365 groups in my tenant. Right? Um, notice the differences. Uh, we can filter whether it's a team, whether it's an M365 group. And these uh, buttons, these tiles at the top are not just informative, they serve also as a filter, right? So if I select the teams, I'm only giving, given the teams uh, inventory across my tenant, right? So uh, this report, uh, it gives you the full list. And of course, all of these teams can be additionally drilled down and explored, which we'll see in a second, or we can of course, jump to the SharePoint site that's in the background of the steam of this M365 group, right? 
So here, we didn't only put together an informative report, but a report that can only, uh, already uh, take you to certain uh, business cases, right? Some things that you want to uh, resolve today. So notice that here in this dropdown, in addition to this list, we can pre-filter certain uh, business cases, business scenarios that we might want to target. So as Andy was talking about uh, teams and capabilities with shared channels and private channels, here through two, two clicks, I can essentially get an inventory of all the teams with shared channels within, uh, within my tenant, right? Um, like I said, these reports are here, they're informative. You can also export them via Excel or PDF, or maybe you wanna stay proactive. Maybe on a regular basis, you wanna get this report and schedule it, right? So right here, you can say, okay, every Monday on a weekly basis, I want it sent to me via email or maybe uploaded to a document library on your SharePoint, right? So that's just one great way to stay on top of uh, everything that's happening in these relevant, uh, in these relevant reports. Um, another step further in this control uh, of your tenant, of your teams, is configuring tenant-wide alerts or resource-specific alerts, right? So I want to be notified as soon as uh, Cisco Point picks up on a log that a certain event happened, I want to be notified of it, right? So when I click here, for example, as soon as there's a sensitivity label change, or for example, as soon as a team is changed from private to public, I probably want to know about it and maybe it will prompt me to action uh, to do something about it, to look into it more deeply. So keep in mind that this can be set up tenant-wide for all of your resources or for specific resources. So speaking of taking action on a specific team, I can, for example, select this product marketing managers team and immediately notice that I'm given this contextual menu on the right-hand side. So as I said before, not just a, a static report, but it allows me to take action in terms of the ownership, the membership, or those alerts that I mentioned. Maybe I want to generate one that's specific to this extra sensitive um, internal project, and I've created a team for it, and I want to be proactive about monitoring it. Another section, very cool section and important section that we have here are the go-to reports. The go-to reports that are uh, singled out here are the ones that are the most frequently used and most relevant. I'm gonna generate this one, the permissions matrix report, which is of course one of, our, one of our staple reports, one of the most important ones. And it answers the question of who has access to what in the context of this particular team. So as soon as I click on it, I can see not only its default membership, so this user and these SharePoint groups, but I can also drill down to the level of a file and see if I have any anonymous links created, right? If I have it shared in any other way. For example, this folder, educations, I can see that I have two types of links created here and uh, I have this uh, folder exposed in, in that way. Maybe I immediately wanna take action and as soon as I select this anonymous link, I can remove it directly out of this report, right? Uh, one of the questions that we frequently get from our clients, from our partners is, okay, if I have a specific link that's shared with only controlled group of people, can I still have control over those people? And that's exactly what, what uh, I'm presenting here. So for example, Alan, I know that Alan is not relevant for the context of this team anymore. I can simply check the box and remove Alan uh, from this team. This probably prompted me to take a deeper dive into this team to see what's happening uh, within it. So remember that all of these are drillable. So as soon as I click on it, I'm taken to the dashboard of this team that gives me additional information that's potentially gonna inform the decisions I make about it. So here I have the general information section as well as the overview, general overview and overview over the content and the permissions. So for example here, I wanna see who my external users are that are present. I want to know all of them. By clicking here, I immediately get a full list of them, right? If I'm not sure, for example, if Deborah should even be in the context of this team, I can click on her right here and then perhaps generate this user activity report that gives me the rundown of all the logs uh, for, uh, for Deborah's actions. Notice that I can also filter out the types of activities that she's done. For example, I might want to know whether she has downloaded a file, and I can see exactly here the details 
of that particular log. And I can see, okay, Deborah is active in the context of this team. Um, she should probably stay as a member. Notice that we have other reports that are very informative. For example, the permission changes. I wanna know in the past seven days, I wanna know all the permission changes, or perhaps I wanna know all the anonymous links that have been created and used. Through a couple of clicks, through the search, I can get a full list of used and created anonymous links. And that, then this can prompt me to take further action in terms of uh, not exposing and securing this team um, on my tenant. Okay, so we've seen how this can help you to go down to the most granular levels of your teams of this one particular team. But I wanna show you one other cool thing um, and it's our report center. So in the report center, we can do a lot of these actions that you just saw, but we can do them in bulk, right? I can do this for multiple teams, multiple M365 groups um, and kind of quicken the process that way. So if I click on the report section, I'm presented with a lot of them uh, that we can talk about uh, more after this uh, after this demo. But then for example, if I click on the sharing links report, I can filter out my Microsoft Teams and in bulk for all of them, I can generate a list of all the sharing links that are created. And not just that, but I can once again select in bulk and remove all sharing links from my selected uh, from my selected resources. Okay. So now you've seen how you, um, as the administrator, can essentially control and take, uh, take a better overview and control over your teams and M365 groups. In our upcoming webinars, we're actually gonna tackle how you can automate a lot of this content and how you can essentially delegate part of this process to your business owners, uh, to those colleagues that are closer to the source of information um, of that project, of that team, uh, whatever it is. Uh, stay tuned uh, for, for those webinars. Uh, we have one coming up in early to mid-February. Um, but in the meantime, if you actually want to try any of this for yourself, on our website, we actually offer a fully free 21-day free uh, SaaS trial of Cisco Point, where you can then validate all of this on your own data. We all know that when you see your own data, you can kind of uh, have better control over it, validate uh, that how quickly you can take action and uh, take control over your M365 uh, entire environment. So please, please, please try it out. We're on the other end if there are any additional questions. Uh, but in this case, um, that's it for me. Uh, please, please, please ask any questions that you might have. Um, and Silvio, I'm bringing it back to you. So thank you. Uh yeah, uh, thank you, Carlo. Uh, another great presentation. Actually, we're two out of two today, so <laughs> as expected, great, thank you. And uh, yeah, now it's time for us to jump on to the Q&A session uh, with Andy. Uh, one more note just for everyone, all of the attendees, feel free to ask the questions even, you know, uh, during the Q&A session, maybe, maybe you're gonna have a sub question related to some of the questions and the answers. So yeah, the, the Q&A is constantly open. Andy, are you ready? Bring it on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Uh, let's start up with the. Let me just bring this uh, up here. Okay. So, hello. <laughs> uh, thank you for the content, Andy. So, my understanding is that SharePoint is kind of the top level application that Teams slash OneDrive all point to. Is that a correct under understanding? Absolutely. Like, like I said, uh, the when you look at the architecture of Microsoft Teams. Teams essentially is a wrapper um, that wraps the various services. So all of the storage, uh, you know, a lot of people get confused between SharePoint and OneDrive. OneDrive is personal storage and SharePoint document libraries are for groups and teams. Yeah. I mean, fundamentally, it's the same storage, but they just call them different. They actually store it in different locations in a data center. That's why they do that. Um, but so SharePoint is the storage. Um, Exchange, uh, Exchange Online manages all the chat, all the meetings, all the scheduling, everything like that. The voice is handled by the old uh, Skype for business elements, the voice elements of that. And as I say, Teams um, is the wrapper service. 
the founding um, mechanism of a team is a Microsoft 365 group that can be extended to become a Microsoft team. Um, once you extend it, you can't go back, but it does have the advantage uh, that teams you can then um, work with uh, third party apps, which Microsoft 365 groups cannot. Okay. Uh, okay, great. Uh, thank you, Andy. And one, I believe, related question for, for, from the from the same person here. So, what are the actual differences between SharePoint teams, a SharePoint team site versus a SharePoint site page? There's no difference. It's the same. Okay, uh, great. So we've covered that part. Okay, let's go further. So the next one is. Is there anything special that needs to be set up for external users or guests in the shared channels? Yes, there is. And um, it's, uh, if you, as I said at the beginning of the session, we recorded a session um, on the SysKit uh, YouTube channel uh, a little while ago. And I take you through an absolute step by step. Yes, you do need to go into Microsoft. Uh, Entra, which is the new name for Azure Active Directory. And uh, if you go into external uh, users, there's a whole area there on external collaboration, and you need to basically open it up so that it will uh, integrate with guests. Yes. Um, but we show you exactly how to do that in that video. Okay. Uh, thank you, Andy. Uh, on to the next question. Uh, first, uh, well, a bit of a praise and the great demo. <laughs> now, regarding shared teams, uh, to invite external users, do I first need to add their organization to B2B Direct Connect? Um, <clears throat> you can um, you can do it in a number of ways. If you B two B Direct Connect is kind of a a time saving feature. So if you're going to be um, inviting multiple users, let's say from a, an organization that you collaborate with regularly, that's very useful. But you can also bring in individual users as well. So yes, I would say yes is the answer to that question. Okay, thank you. And uh, now to the next question. So can I upgrade existing private channels to shared channels or do I have to recreate them newly and why? No. A, when you create a channel, you create a dedicated site. So it's a channel site in SharePoint, as you saw. Um, so there are three types of channels, public, private, and, a, and the new shared channel. Um, you would need to create a shared channel. Um, you can't, there's no way to convert them at this point, I'm afraid. Okay, great. Uh, thank you. I'm seeing some people are raising hands here, so feel free to write your questions in the Q&A and we're going to answer them. Uh, but yeah, uh, we can give it a minute or so if someone Absolutely. else wants to ask any question. Yeah. And uh, if not, we can slowly wrap it up. Okay. <laughs> okay, we have. <laughs> so how do you migrate public group groups in exchange to team groups? Okay, um, good question. You can do it through PowerShell. Yeah, there's a PowerShell command. Um, if you go to docs.microsoft.com, and, <clears throat> and uh, I assume you're talking about public folders in, ex in Exchange, yes? So um, basically a public folder needs to be upgraded to be a Microsoft 365 group. Once it becomes a Microsoft 365 group, you can then upgrade it to be a team. Okay. Um, within once you've got the team, um, you can if if you've got multiple channels and you've got like a public channel, you can change that to become private and public. Okay. Okay, great, and yeah, I think we've opened something else here now. That's, I mean, we do it like a minute of waiting, which is good. Okay, so regarding Teams Live Share, do I require the new Teams Pri Premium license? Now you know that this is a new feature, and to be honest, I'm not sure about the licensing. 
I'm not a sales guy. I just, I just teach the stuff. So sorry, I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't know. Sorry. Uh, a good website, by the way, is m365maps.com. So m365maps.com. Um, that's a great kind of it's it's by a, an MVP colleague of mine. And he, um, he it shows you all the different licenses and license requirements. Yeah. OK, on to the next one. So uh, back to the share channels now. So how can we add organization without B2B connection? You can't. OK, that was a fairly simple answer. And uh, OK, let's go onwards. Uh, just a second appreciation a lot of appreciation for your input here andy today yeah that's nice i'm just filtering through questions and appreciation no <laughs> uh, what is the difference between inviting guests to private channel and shared channel okay um uh, private guests or guests um when you create a guest you can create guest accounts or external users either in Azure Active Directory, so you can add, so for example, if it was a customer or a supplier or somebody like that, you can add them in there. Um, or you can add them in, in through Microsoft Teams. So James Bond at mi6.gov, yes? Uh, you can invite him in through Teams if you're allowed to do so. So if you've got the permissions, the correct permissions, and the correct settings, by the way, which is all configurable in Azure Active Directory external collaboration settings. That's where you would configure all of this. All right. Um, so that's where you would you would basically add them in. See, so typically with a with a private channel, um, they need to be a member of the channel already. Yes, you can add them in directly. Um, yeah. So I didn't say that quite right, but yes. So private a private channel, you can um, they can request to join the channel, okay? But you need to approve them. That's that's the difference between that and a public channel. Okay, thank you, Andy. And I think this is going to be the last one. I mean, it's half a question to put it that way, but it's definitely up to you. So uh, one of the attendees here is asking. Will you do another sem uh, seminar actually demonstrating how to migrate public group groups in exchange to Teams groups? Hmm. Um, I could do a YouTube video on it maybe sometime. The problem is the problem is that um, with public folders, nobody really uses them anymore, and it's difficult. It's a difficult thing to demo because I would need to have the infrastructure to demo it. And the problem is I don't have the infrastructure to demo it. <laughs> and that's 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 the issue with it. So, um, but yes, I I could maybe um, uh, have a have a look at something for you. Okay. And uh, another one popped up while you were replying to this one. So, Fine. can you configure MFA on Teams app? Meaning every time you open Teams app on the same PC, you will be prompted to MFA. Absolutely, 100%. You can do it through conditional access. OK, so I think we're going to stop with the questions for now, Andy. I think we, <laughs> we we answered a lot of them. And thank you for all of this. This was great. Absolutely. Uh, so yeah, let's uh, wrap this up slowly. So once again, thank you absolutely everyone who joined us here today. Uh, once again, for you to know, you're going to receive the recording of this uh, within a few days. Uh, thank you, Andy, really much for, well, for joining us today, for hosting a great pleasure. presentation. It was absolute pleasure having you. So is there anything else you would like to say to your fans out there? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Sign up to my YouTube channel. <laughs> no, thanks very much for joining us, guys. I really do appreciate you taking the time out. And uh, yeah, fantastic to have you all. Uh, we had great numbers, so not really nice to see everybody. Okay, and uh, definitely download Syskit Point. Have a look at it. It's really good, by the way. I did a, a YouTube review on it recently. It was good. Okay. Okay, great. Uh, thank you, Andy. Also, thank you, Carlo. You're not here visually with us on here, but thank you for the nice presentation. Uh, if anyone has any questions regarding Syskit Point, 
any of our products, uh, you know, just reach out to us at uh, sales at syskit.com. And uh, yeah, it was a pleasure seeing you all here and uh, being a host. See you all next time. Take care.